In this tutorial, I will show you step by step how you can build this decimal counter yourself. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. Today, we will use the CD4026 integrated circuit to build a simple decimal counter. Before we look at the schematic, here's what you need. A 400 pin breadboard, a 9 volt block battery with a battery clip, the CD4026 counter IC, two push buttons, one 470 ohms and two 4.7 kilo ohms resistors, a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor and a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor, a common cathode seven segment LED display and a bunch of single-stranded wires. I recommend American wire gauge 24 or 0.6 millimeters. As always, you can find a detailed list with links on where to buy everything in the companion article on friendlywire.com. The components altogether cost less than a coffee at your favorite cafe. So now, let's take a look at the schematic. In the middle, you can see the CD4026 integrated circuit and right next to it is the common cathode seven segment LED display. The outputs A through G connect to the seven LEDs inside the LED display. Their cathodes are all connected together and we connect them to ground via the 470 ohms resistor R3. The CD4026 integrated circuit is a so-called CMOS chip and works with voltages from three to 18 volts so we can just use a simple 9 volt block battery to power this circuit. Okay, what about all this stuff on the left? This weird looking symbol here stands for the power connections of the CD4026 and next to it I placed a 100 nanofarad smoothing capacitor. That capacitor is not technically needed with battery power but comes in handy if you ever decide to run this counter from a less reliable power source. The buttons S1 and S2 are used to increase the counter or reset it back to zero. The resistors R1 and R2 act as pull-down resistors, so that the clock input and the reset input are connected to ground, a logical low, when the buttons are not pressed. The one microfarad capacitor C2 is very important because it debounces the button S1. What is debouncing? Many electrical buttons, when pushed only once, actually open and close multiple times because of mechanical vibrations. We don't want this because the counter would then increase many times after the push of the button and not just once as it should. When adding the capacitor, the signal is smoothed out and the counter ignores the bouncing. Try it for yourself and see what happens if you don't use the capacitor. For the reset signal, we don't need another capacitor because it doesn't matter if the counter resets only once or twice or many times it'll still be zero. Okay, let's build the schematic on the breadboard. Just as a quick reminder, in these breadboards, the rows are numbered from one to 30 and the columns are labeled from A to E on the left and from F to J on the right. Each row is electrically connected both on the left and on the right side of that notch, but not across. On the left and right, we also have the so-called power rails that are connected all the way vertically. First, let's connect the two power rails on both sides. This really makes life simpler later down the road. Take a look at the schematic on the right. The positive power rail, also called VDD, is this whole red part. The negative power rail, also called ground or VSS, is this blue part. Now place the CD4026 chip in row 20. Make sure that this notch here points up and not down. And no, this circle here is not a notch, it is just a confusing circle. The pins are numbered counterclockwise, from pin 1 at the top left, to pin 8 on the bottom left, to pin 9 on the bottom right, all the way to pin 16 on the top right. Now connect pin 16 to VDD and pin 8 to VSS. Next, we can place our 7 segment display in row 10, and add the 470 ohms resistor R3 on pin 8 of the 7 segment display. The pins of the display are numbered in a strange way like this. And this here is the pinout. 
<laughs> Don't worry if this part is a bit too fast. You can always look it up in the article. Now place the two push buttons in row 4. Be careful to mount them correctly because it is easy to rotate them by 90 degrees accidentally. If you flip a button over, you can see a little groove between the pins and that groove should be horizontal. Now it's time to connect more pins at the CD4026. Connect pin 2, the clock inhibit pin to ground and pin 3, the display enable pin to VDD. This makes sure that the counter reacts to clock pulses and that the display is turned on. If you want to turn the display on and off, connect pin 3 to a switch that alternates between ground and VDD. Now place the 4.7 kilo ohms resistors R1 and R2 and make sure that they connect pins 1 and 15 to ground and not to VDD which is right next to it. The capacitor C2 goes between pin 1 and pin 2. C2 is an electrolytic capacitor and polarity sensitive. Make sure that the big minus sign is connected to pin 2. If you flip this around, the capacitor will get very hot and it might even explode. Here you can see a close-up of the capacitor with the big minus sign. Make sure it plugs into pin 2. The capacitor C1 doesn't care about polarity. Just plug it in the power rail as close to the CD4026 as possible. Next, connect the upper terminal of the two push buttons to VDD. The lower terminal of S1 is connected to pin 1, the clock input of the CD4026. And the lower terminal of S2 is connected to the reset input, pin 15. Now it's time to connect the segments of the LED display. This is a bit tedious, but if you follow the wiring diagram closely, it'll be a piece of cake. If you cut the green wires to more or less the exact length, it even looks kind of pretty. Well, kind of. Finally, all you need to do is connect the battery clip to the power rail. Connect the red wire to VDD and the black wire to ground. And that's it. Congrats, you did it. Remember that there's a companion article to this video with many more details and lots of other interesting projects for you to check out. Is there something else you want to learn? Write it in the comments under this video and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching, for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.